the Ukraine uh, military aid funding overnight by Richard Miles. Do you have a view on that, a reaction to that? Well, I think it's a good thing. I mean, we need to support liberal democracies that are under pressure across the globe. Uh, we're seeing that happening in Ukraine. We're seeing it happening in Israel. And so wherever we can support as a middle power uh, liberal democracies to stand against totalitarianism and terrorism, we need to be able to do that. And we've been calling for a long time uh, for this government to step up on the Ukraine, and it's good to see this new funding. Let's talk about the budget in your portfolio. Inflation figures during the week appeared to show the government needs to rein in spending. Yet at the same time, they're under fire when it comes to cutting infrastructure funds in Western Sydney in particular. When it comes to the government's infrastructure cuts, what are your concerns? And do you see some rationale behind it, given labour shortages and the like? Yeah, Andrew, I think what we've seen under this infrastructure Prime Minister is a $25 billion cut to critical infrastructure projects in our congested cities and our regional centres. And that's simply not good enough when you're wanting a more productive and competitive economy. Uh, we know from economists' uh, commentary over the last week that inflation isn't just sticky, it is absolutely homegrown, and the fiscal policy settings of this government are responsible for that. And I think one of the more concerning issues is that you've got the RBA keeping rates higher than they need to be for longer because of the government's fiscal policy. Settings. But at the same time, uh, you're the, the saying... The only other lever... The but only other lever, Andrew, available to the RBA, according to economists, is that they're going to have to look at the jobs market. And you know what Bri that means. Bridget McKenzie, so, you're saying at the same time yep. that, that they, uh, they, they should return that infrastructure funding, i.e. spend more, but you're saying they should spend less as well. Is that, is that your position? Well... Well, I think Jim Chalmers has uh, made a big deal of saying it's where you spend the money that makes the difference. I am arguing that you should be spending it on uh, productivity-enhancing infrastructure that's also dealing with the migration um, disaster that you've got in particularly our capital cities, right. rather than the services sector, which is where which is where the inflation problem actually is, Andrew. It's in the services sector. OK. Uh, so we saw an embarrassing thing from the Labor government, senior cabinet ministers this year, in, this week in Western Sydney, with their talking points out of PMO or Catherine King's office, saying more funding was going into infrastructure projects in Western Sydney when they're being cut. The only new projects are stadiums for premiers and the suburban rail loop. All right. Well, let me ask do you th briefly, do you think there should be an increase in Commonwealth rental assistance in the budget? Well, I think what we have seen, and you mentioned it in your um, commentary with the Minister, is the large, highest growth of rent increases since 2009. It's sitting at 7.8%, uh, I think, since over the past 12 months. So people in, with mortgages and rents are really feeling the pinch. The best thing, Andrew, to deal with the cost of living pressures is actually to get inflation under control. And that means stop your spending, Jim. The big test for Jim Chalmers in this budget isn't about rent assistance here or a little bit of cutting an infrastructure project over here. Will he stop the massive growth in spending because it's gone in, up in excess right. of $210 billion can, can I, since coming to power. And that's of, wrong. Almost out of time. There's been talk the opposition's nuclear policy has been delayed because the Nationals are concerned about power stations in their electorates having uh, advocated for this for so long. Is this true? Absolutely not. The National Party is committed to nuclear power generation being part of our credible pathway to net zero by 2050. Uh, we don't think what the government's got in plan is working. Uh, it's ripping up private property rights in our own communities and it's not going to deliver the emission reductions we need as a country uh, over the coming decades. So and we want a credible plan and we'll be announcing that uh, when the time is right. And just finally, I wanted to ask about Scott Morrison's revelations concerning his mental health. You weren't a fan of him, given he sacked you as a minister. You felt a scapegoat over the so-called sports rorts affair. Do, do the revelations surprise you? Do I think you have you're a reaction verbaling to them? me there, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I might think be a were... bit of verbaling, Andrew. But, <laughs> OK, um, perhaps you were a I fan. I resigned. But what's your, that was what... my decision. <laughs> Indeed. And uh, what's uh, your reaction to yeah, the revelations? Look...
Well, look, I think it's an incredibly difficult job. Um, Scott obviously had uh, mental health issues that he chose to seek appropriate medical help with, uh, which is absolutely what people should be doing. And I, I've always said uh, that history will be kinder to the Morrison government um, than immediately after the last election because uh, we got this country through uh, a global pandemic in sterling form. Bridget McKenzie, thanks so much for your time.